Now, winner of six straight. Interesting backstory. Let's say hello to Mateus Nicolau, the pride of Brazil for the first time. And I have to say, I'm sorry, my friend. I booked you during the uh, Brazil game. I'm so sorry. Are you mad at me? Yeah, a little bit because I, I missed the game, but it's all good. That, that was for a, a good reason. What because do you mean you missed the game? Here, yeah. Thank it's, you. it's the second half. We, you had the whole... Why'd you miss the game? Yeah, because I'm in a friend's house and we don't have cable TV here, only internet. We could find a place to watch. We try some uh, some bad links and... But I, at least I could see what was going on in Brazil won, so it's all good. Yes, I, last I checked, it was four nil. Did it? Did it remain four yeah. nil? Yeah, I think I think it's something like that. Okay, amazing. And and it's, uh, it's already it's already it's finished. Won, like yeah, yeah, all good. And uh, he got some make goals. It's, it's good. Amazing. You're you're a big uh, yeah. you're a big fan of football, right? I I know you you uh, you played as a kid, but do you, do you watch the World Cup? Do you watch? Uh, do you follow it? Even though you're training for your fight? Yes, yeah, always, man. I, I cannot miss the 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 World Cup. It's one of the the things that I like more to to watch. World Cup and Olympics. I wanted to be a soccer player when I was a kid before I met Jiu Jitsu, so it's still in my heart. And and why did you stop playing soccer? Uh, because I found love for jiu-jitsu. I was doing it since I was like really, really young. I was like traveling for a competition as a, a football since I was like around eight. And then I met jiu-jitsu. I really like it. I was kind of tired of the competition and, and soccer and stuff like that. And really fall in love for jiu-jitsu. And then I just follow my heart make the decision. Uh, how how good were you? Like, do you think you could have made it far in uh, in football? Like, could you have been the next Ronaldo, Neymar, Ronaldinho? Like, how how good were you? I I was good. I I, I stood for free because of soccer for a few years. I played Atlético Mineiro, which is my hard team in the city I came from. I, I used to play good, but I don't know if God will give me so much of talent because I know I'm going to be a world champion in MMA. So I don't know if I would be a Ronaldo in soccer, you know? Okay. Fair enough. I like that. Um, and, and by the way, you think Brazil is going to win it all? Yeah, man, I'm really confident. I think the, the team is playing well. Everybody's playing happy. You know, they are really unite. I think Brazil have a big, big chance of being a world cup, uh, world cup champion. Uh, and, and biggest threat in your opinion. I thought that one of them was Germany and they just got kicked out. So I think Argentina, because our history is, is a, a tough game. You know, it's always difficult when you, you know, go against Argentina. And Spain, Spain is good as well. Not France, huh? I think France might be up there. Yeah, France, of course. Yeah, I was forgetting about paying everybody. They're pretty really good. Yeah, maybe France. And they was the last World Cup champion. That's so. right. Um, okay, so you had a big weekend as well, massive win for you. Um, and and I'm wondering, you 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 said afterwards that you fought out your deal. Why did you decide to do that? Uh, it was not uh, my side decision, you know. Uh, UFC, uh, I think they think that was the best decision for them. For them, thinking about businesses, and I just fought. You know, I had a one more fight in my contract. They gave me this fight against Matches Now, which I thank for the opportunity because I, I like it, that fight. I like it, the way Schnell uh, challenged me. He was respectful. He just wanted the fight. And I really liked that. He was not that trash talking bullshit guy. And huh. he was a guy I was uh, seeing that having been fighting with the toughest guys in the division for years. And I saw it. I saw the fight as a good opportunity. You no, know, I knew that my game would, would, do, would do good against him. So. I just went to the fight and took every all the situation as an opportunity, you know. Did you feel a lot of pressure that you had to win or had to look very good in order to get them to offer you a new contract? Yes, of course. It was something that was in the middle of the, all the situation. and But I was really, really focused on only thinking about the fight and the what I need to do, the weapons I need to, to use. But of course, man, because... The last time I was out of the UFC, I was coming from a three-win fighting streak. It was my fourth fight. And now again, it was the same situations. And some things happened uh, all around the way. It was funny. Like, it was again my fourth fight 
coming from three wins. And the judge was the same judge that judged my loss for the securities. And wow. I just knew that in the, the locker room. When I saw him, I say, is Peterson? I was like, damn, man, again. But at the same time, one more opportunity to change my mind and, you know, to develop. And there's, there's nothing to do, you know. I made a really, really good job, really, really, really good work until there. And I will get this victory. So everything was kind of challenging me, you know, for that situation. And, but I really took everything as an opportunity to, do, to grow. And I think just was good. And and I think you mean uh, the referee, right? Keith Peterson, same same yeah, guy, yeah. Keith Peterson. Crazy. Yeah, it was the same guy. So yeah, not the judge, the referee. Right, sorry, right. but it was one more thing, you know, like one more challenge that make the situation kind of the same. You know, four fight, the same the same referee, and he only he only judge uh, only every my fights that that time before. So wow. that was the second time. So that is that weird. Was nice as well. Um, yeah. And and just curious, you think if you would have signed a contract before this fight that you would have knocked him out? Or do you think the fact that you didn't get the contract gave you a little extra motivation to be more aggressive? No, no, no. Uh, it was the same. The fight was about to, to be the same. I, I think I really uh, could really fight what I needed to do to get the victory, which was my focus. Of course, like I said, all the situation was happening. And it was in my mind in a few moments and stuff like that. But my main focus is to win, like is is always. So, what do you think happens now? Do you do you think you're going to stick around in the UFC? For sure, that's my that's my goal. That's my dream, you know, to be a UFC world champ. And I think that now I prove one my time, my value, you know. And I think UFC just they they will see that for sure. But do you think they're going to offer you a deal? Yeah, for sure. Okay. No doubt about it. Okay, you're confident. Yeah. So you're not worried. There's no reason for that. There's no yeah. reason for they don't do it. No, I, they just signed me back. You know, they gave me good fights. You know, always fights that I could grow. Like uh, guys ranked higher than me, like Tim Elliott was a good fight. And then, okay, Divorak, he was under me in the car, but he was a, a huge win in streaks. You know, I don't know how many years that guy was undefeated. And he was a guy who was kind of hyped, you know, even he was below me in the rankings, but it was a good fight, a fight for me to grow. And again, Matt Snell, who was below me in the rankings, but he was a top 10. He was a guy who knew it in all USA for the MMA fans. So UFC have been treating me good, they have been giving me the opportunity to grow, and there is no reason for them to not give me a deal right now, especially because I'm pretty confident that I made a really good job until there. Why, why do you think, Mateus, yeah. um, when we talk about the, the names at 125, why does it seem like we don't talk enough about you? And I'll, I'll put myself in that category too. Do you feel like you don't get the attention that you deserve? Because, you know, we talk obviously about Moreno, Figueredo, Kai Kaikar France, uh, you know, even Oscar, Oscar of all these guys, but I feel like you don't get the attention that, that uh, you deserve. Do you agree with that? I agree with that. But it's all good. I I think I'm making my way, and now how things are happening. And I really believe. I think that believing in God is kind of accepting things the way they are happening. You know, I think I'm now I'm better prepared. Like my English is better now to talk with you. Yeah. To be understanding. And I was about to talk to you the same. Was the knockout that was missing for you to talk with me? Maybe. Maybe it was. Enough. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> But In fact, by the anybody, way, when I when I tagged you on my post uh, today for the show, I saw that in March of 2021, you sent me a message, yeah. a DM. I didn't yeah. see it. I didn't see it. Where I'm showing it no here. Problem. You, I'm showing it. So I'm I'm saying myself, I'm at fault too. We're showing it on the screen, and your manager, who I love dearly, Eduardo Alonso, also your coach, he has been talking to me about you for a long time. So I will put myself in that category. I, you can blame me also. And also, Mateus, I saw you don't seem happy with MMA fighting. You think MMA fighting not covering you as well, right? That's the site that we are working for here. And we're showing that too. So I'm putting everything out there. Why do you see? Why do you feel like people like myself, like MMA fighting, aren't talking about you enough? Why do you feel this way? Uh, I really don't know, man, because I really feel that I'm a really, uh, I'm a respectful guy that deserves the attention. I really believe that my fights, they are exciting. 
I fight everybody they offer me. You know, I always make good fight. Sometimes people want to see more of, more of a bang, but man, I'm not like that. You know, I try to fight strategically. And honestly, I really believe that I do fight beautifully. If you do pay attention, you know, in the fight. And but I get the the people they are in the arena. They like the the blood fights sometimes. But if they have patience, they will they will get it. You know, just like in that fight, they was booing one second before I knocked him out. And like, how many knockdowns was in five six minutes of five of fight? In six minutes was like four knockdowns. Mm. How can you boo that? You know, that was not exciting enough for you. Like, I mean, for you, for everybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. for the. So I think when the people really start realizing you and paying attention on you, they will understand better your way of fighting. They will respect you more. They you, uh, they can understand more of your, your way, and it will be like a natural thing. They will like more of your way of fighting. And I see. Oh, sorry, one second. One was calling me. No I problem. Just... I got you. You're back. Yeah. And I think that's it. You know, like. Um, People will pay attention on you and they will start to like more because they will really understand what's going on. So I think it's something natural, you know. Now people, they will have to pay attention because I'm getting. It was exactly what I said to you in the message 2021. I'm getting little by little, but I will get there. I know that. Even, even no respect on the video game, not even on the video game. Yes, man. I, I'm running out of excuses with my grandson, man. Ugh. My godson. Because my godson, he's always asking, hey, when can I play with you? And a lot of, of my friends who play, I love to play video games. And to be honest, I didn't I didn't play UFC 4 until now because I'm mad at them. Oh, my God. Because there's a lot of guys that I already beat there on the game and I'm not on the game. You know? So why not? So you're refusing to now play you, I, until they put you in the game? Yeah, I only play when they put me in the game. Okay, I'm going to call DC and tell them uh, to tell EA to put you in the game. That's crazy. Um, and Thank you, Andrew. Yes, Thank for you. sure, for sure, my friend. By the way, I understand you didn't get in the video game yet, but uh, is it true Matt Schnell, after the fight, came to see you and he gave you a present? Yeah, yeah, Matt Schnell is a really respectful guy. Uh, in the waiting, he came to me and said he had a gift for me. At the beginning, I was like, man, is that a strategy or he just bring a gift from for me? What, what it is? What is his game plan with this? But then I didn't took the gift that moment because he didn't have. He said that he had the hotel. And then he said that he was a sports card collector and he had one of my cards. Wow. And then after the fight, I came to him and said, hey, you still going to give me my gift? And he said, of course, man. So... I really, that moment I realized that he was being honest, I guess. It was not a, a strategy to make me insult or something like that. But I was so focused before the fight, man. I was not given a chance of, of nothing to change my mind over there or take my focus out. So I was really focused on the fight. Of course, that made me think, you know, in the moment, is that a strategy or not? But anyway, but after the fight he gave me, he, he gave me the, the sports card. He was, man, that guy was really respectful. He's a really warrior, really macho artist. Wow. And the way he came to me with his, you know, cool head and really respectful. And we changed shirts. was the first time I did it after a fight. I give, I give my shirt. He gave me his. And, man, I have even more respect for him now with all of his attitude. You know, he's a really, really... Honorable man. I like that. That's kind of like in soccer when they change the uh, the jerseys because he called you out in July and uh, your tweet, I think when he called you out was uh, maybe a little more contentious. What is the tweet? I think we have it here. Um, your dreams can become your worst nightmare. So, but now you guys are cool. Yes. No, no. I was always cool with him. I just think that he challenged me. Yeah. I was not mad. I just, man, I was, that, that day, one of my greatest friends, he was getting married. And I, I was his best man. I was in his wedding. And then people were sending me a message. Hey, Matt Snell just uh, challenged you. Shout out to Hugo, my, my big friend. He was one of my best friends. I gave him his black belt. He started training jiu-jitsu with me. And I was in his wedding, man. I was kind of pissed that moment. Hey, how someone just... Uh -huh. uh, 
calling me out right now, man. I was drinking whiskey in the in the wedding. And then, but he was respectful. The way he called me was respectful. He just wanted the fight. And then I just posted, man, hey, be careful what you wish, you know, and that's it, man. I will give my best. You want to challenge me? Okay, I take it. But I will give my best to to win and to cut his head off and just happen it. Um, another guy who was very successful on the card was Rafael Dos Anjos, who we just had on the show before you. And I understand he was a, a, a big idol of yours when you were coming up and that it was a huge deal for you to be on the same card as him. Is that true? Yeah, it's credible, man, because he trained in the gym that I started training Jiu-Jitsu, which is Caveirinha. I started training with uh, Rodrigo Freitas in uh, Caveirinha Jiu-Jitsu in Belo Horizonte. And Rafael is one of the guys who train in MMA when they have an MMA team, which in, in the time they still call it Vale Tudo team. But then everybody was growing up. Rafael went to Europe and then he go to Rio de Janeiro to keep training. Igor Araújo, that was another UFC fighter that came from Caveirinha. It's another Caveirinha black belt. He, he fought for the UFC as well. He went to Switzerland for teaching and living. And they was my idol. They was the guy that came from the same place that I, that I came that made it, you know, he made it all the way to the UFC. They followed the dream. They travel they changed their life with the mma and then he was one of my closest idol because he was kind of the same uh way that i was and fighting the same card one fight before him you know after i remember to watch his ufc debut wow. he lost his two first fight but it was incredible fights and then he just became a champion later and he was one of the guys that I have as a, a mirror for me when I was kicked out for the UFC because of that as well. As well, I say, hey, Rafael started his UFC career with two defeats, and then he became a champion. I was three one. I will get back. You know, I I know I can do it, and I will be a champion again. So for a lot of reason, he was one of my idols, and fighting before him was a really honor for me. Did so that night was perfect. Did you say any of this um, to him? Did you get a chance to say any of this to him? I said after the fight, and another curiosity, because after years and years, we didn't train together at the same gym at the same time in, uh, yeah. in Caveirinha. I did some of the seminars. He was around so, for some time, but he was not training, living there in Belo Horizonte no more. But then after years, he's now training in Nova União in Rio de Janeiro, so we are training in the same gym. So wow. how in around and it wasn't the same way. And after the fight, I took the chance to tell him this and it was it was really nice for me. Amazing. That is incredible. Um and, and exactly. yes, yeah. The the stars yeah. are aligning for you. The, yeah. star, the stars are yeah, aligning. Yeah. Um I, I you you mentioned earlier that uh you grew up loving soccer and then you you know you found jujitsu. Um I also understand that when you were young, I think you were around thirteen, unfortunately you lost your father. And I'm wondering how that affected yeah affected your plans like did that did that horrible um turn of events have anything to do with you choosing jiu-jitsu as opposed to soccer yes of course it is because uh, a little before my father died i was back in jiu-jitsu i started training jiu-jitsu when i was nine years old then i stopped because i really wanted to be a soccer player and i have to study and everything but then when i was 13 i got back in jiu-jitsu first with the ideas i need to get uh, my body better, get stronger, you know, get better in my equilibrium for do better in, in soccer. Uh. But I was kind of tired already with soccer, you know. I was just not really being honest with myself. And then I started playing jiu-jitsu and I was really, really excited about it. And I remember my father came to me one day and said, hey, what do you want to do? Want to be a fighter or want to be a soccer player? You got to decide it. And I was kind of, you know, without, I, I was afraid to let him down and I didn't said nothing about no i want to be a fighter because i didn't really know too but then a few months later he passed away and the only thing that i did that day was going to jiu-jitsu and i remember year, years later that friend that i am in his house right now rodrigo freitas he's living in l.a right now he has a gym here in manhattan beach uh he years later he came to me and said hey man that day when you came to the gym after your father died I said, that boy is going to be a champion because wow. he really likes that. 
And it was something really natural for me. I was doing that because it was helping me, you know, it was something that I loved. And I think jiu-jitsu was one of the best things for me back in the day because I just fell in love for the way, for the martial arts. I think having Rodrigo loving what he's doing, he was a brown belt back in the day. And then he just got his back belt months later. So I was with him uh, traveling for a competition in jiu-jitsu. You know, he always putting me up. And jiu-jitsu really saved my life back in the day. I think uh, it was... Um, one of the best things was to have jiu-jitsu with me when my father died and then I just pursued my dream when he died I kind of talked to myself no man I'm gonna follow my heart that's what I want to do and I didn't talk that to nobody I just thinking about myself and just went to jiu-jitsu I, I remember all the day uh, months later I came to one of my friends and say hey I will stop playing soccer because I want to focus on jiu-jitsu and he hey man you're crazy I was so teeny, so small, you know. He was, man, look your size, man. How are you going to be a fighter? You're crazy. You play good. You play soccer good. I said, hey, man, I just, I think I want this. And my my brother, Eduardo, is the guy who who brings me to jiu-jitsu for the first time. He used to fight jiu-jitsu. And he always motivated me anything I wanted to do. If I said that I want to be a, a whatever, a he say, man, you, you want to do it, you can do it. And I said to and he always bring me to soccer plays. He was always with me. He was one of my first motivator, he and my father. And when I said to him that I want to be a Valetudo fighter, because I was training jiu-jitsu, but I started jiu-jitsu by watching Valetudo tapes by Hickson Gracie and everybody. He said, man, if you want to do it, you got to do it. You can do it. You just have to go to Rio de Janeiro when you are older. I say, really, I have to go to Rio de Janeiro. Why? Because I think there in Brazil, people are living this for a long time. And just happened, I went to Rio years later, too. Wow. So that was, I think, having jiu-jitsu and the way that my father died that year was something that made me make a decision, you know. And just follow my heart. was simple, was nothing hard for me. It was just natural. When, and, and then obviously when the UFC was deciding to get rid of the flyweight division and they said goodbye to you after the Ortiz fight, did you consider, Ugh, you know, this is horrible, no flyweight division, at least for a moment, how am I going to get back? There's no other organizations that really have flyweights. I know you fought at bantamweight, but did you consider changing careers or were you determined to somehow get back? I considered changing weight class. Okay. That's all. That was it. Yeah. I just changed weight class. I fought. I made two fights in 135. Even that I was, I think I I think that I still have some energy to spend in 125. But I said, man, if UFC doesn't have that division, UFC is the biggest organization in the world. Then other organizations just follow her UFC steps. So if UFC doesn't have this division, I think this division will be kind of die. And then what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna change division. I'm gonna do a work for getting weight and fight in 135. And then I made two fights. I fought a very tough guy in Brave uh, in a short, kind of short nose. And in my hometown was another great opportunity to fight in my hometown after years and years. Felipe Efraim, he's a good guy. I'm a KO artist. And I, I did good. And then some months go and we have seen made an offer again. I think it was good that Cerrudo beat uh, TJ. Everything happened the way it was. So, And I also, I think that the Matthews Johnson Sussex in uh, one made it good in some somehow made it good for the flyweight even UFC mm. to you know so they just kept the division and now I think the flyweight in, in the best time ever in the history I guess with yeah. best fighters and more exciting fights and I think like the media the fans they are giving more respect more attention for the the division and also the UFC you know i think the UFC by itself is seeing the division with different different eyes 100% uh you guys used to be buried now you're getting main card now you're on on the MMA hour and everyone's going to be talking about you so everything has changed talk about the MMA hour and you see like the way they Put our fights in that that card. That card in uh, Orlando was a yeah. kind of uh, a card, mm -hmm. you know. Have 
come on, man, Ben Ben Dui Vasa, he was doing uh, main events like Moff Bex, you know, and a lot of great fights, man. I see Clay Guida fight with Rafael also, you yeah, know, was crazy. My other, oh, Clay Guida, Michael <sighs> Johnson, a lot of great guys fighting under me, you know, and I say, man, they are giving me some respect for that division, you know, for sure, you can't deny that. So uh, you're confident you'll resign. When do you want to fight again? And and who makes sense now? Because I feel like you're very close. Who makes sense? Uh, I think the guy make more sense about everything. My history in the division is the guy. I will be really honest. I think Pantoja is the next in line. He gotta take the champion, and I, I gotta take whoever gets defeated. Okay. Uh, whoever loses, you mean, like between Moreno and Figueredo? Yes. Being, being honest with Pantoja, I think he deserved more. Yeah. Right now, I think he deserves the line. And then gave me, you can give me the contender fight. And uh, who do you think wins that fight, Moreno or Figueredo? Uh, I'm not sure about it. Uh, it will be a close fight. I think both, they are really good. And they have ways of winning the fight. But I believe that uh, that uh, Davidson have a slight advantage. Okay. Wow. And and would you have an issue? That got closer to finish the fight. You know? Right. Uh, do you do you have an issue fighting a fellow Brazilian? Uh, no. I I just rather to like uh, uh, Pontoj is a guy who I trained with. Yeah. He came to my home he already. You know, we ate together, and we trained good for years. He's a guy that I ready to fight if it was for the belt, you know, like if we are both in the highest level of our career, yeah. I want to have the chance to succeed the same way I want to my friends have the chance to succeed. So if we are both on the top, okay, man, we fight to make money, you know, we give our best, that's okay. I don't see a reason to fight before that, right. you know, if you have a lot of honest that can put us in the same position. That's my idea, but... If it is for the belt, to be a huge honor. And uh, by the way, congratulations, uh, uh, Luana Pinheiro. Is she a uh, girlfriend, fiance? What, what is she? Wife, training partner, student? She's my girlfriend who lives together, kind of fiance. She's my my prime partner. Okay. And you're her coach, yeah. right? You, you have single-handedly changed her from just a judo player to now a, a very successful MMA fighter. Uh, I cannot take all the credits. This was was not being a, a fair, you know. She has a lot of great coaches as well. But I made a, a, a good part of that, I, I believe, because since the day we just met, we was always talking about fighting. And I started MMA really soon. My first, my MMA debut, I was 17 years old. So when she was moving to Belo Horizonte, she's from Paraíba, far away from Belo Horizonte, the city that I grew up. Uh, she moved to Belo Horizonte to fight for a big team there, judo. When she was moving to Belo Horizonte to fight in judo and spend all some, the next 10 years almost, uh, uh, fighting only judo in the highest level, I was moving to Rio to to live and fight in MMA. And so I have more time of MMA than her. So I think it was naturally, I was kind of teaching him more, showing him some stuff. But now we are in a position that I'm her coach and she is my coach. She she was one of the main voices that I was listening in my fight. You know, uh, we have a good connection. I we talk a lot. We live that a hundred percent. You know, so now I can say she's my coach uh, as well. At home, uh, I, I would imagine ninety nine percent of your conversations involve MMA, right? It has to do about MMA, 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 right? Yeah. Mostly, we try to have an equilibrium on that, but mostly it's about MMA. It's fighting, you know, MMA, boxing, judo, and right. well, everything. Uh, congratulations again. So lovely to meet you. So great to have you on the show for the first time. Again, I'm sorry for uh, not seeing your message and, and for taking so long. Uh, Shirley Eduardo has, has told me a lot about you. And I said... Six in a row and knockout. That will be the moment. And so, you know, here we are. Six in a row and a knockout. So I hope you get a great new contract. And I hope you get a next, uh, you know, a big next fight. And 2023, you fight for the belt, right? That's the hope? Yeah, that's my goal now. All right. I look that's forward to goal. it. Thank you, thank you for your time. Thank you for being honest and saying that, you know, I really respect that. And 
everything happened the right moment and there was the right moment for us to talk. And that's it. 2023, you are on the top. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, my friend. All the best to you. Talk to you soon. There he is, Mateus Nicolau, top contender from Brazil. Another one you can add to the list.